I know you made it. You said that you kind of sort of believe in the Bible, right? And I know you will. You have a different way of thinking. You're like a Moor or something, right? I heard. Okay. So, sis, why? What? What is it that you don't believe in the Bible? Okay. So my perception is off of experience, what I learn, what I see, okay. Okay. stories, religions, and even like I said, spirituality. So keep it's kind okay. of where my thought process comes from because you know you you know you guys are preaching here, right? Whereas when I went to Norway, they, right. they preach about okay. their Viking gods, very similar. In so, so, so you from you're from here, Oakland? Right here, where, where you're from San Francisco. You from you from Oakland? You you been around? You been traveling too? Sort of, kind of. Okay. So now my question to you is this: You traveling? What have you learned about yourself? Give me Ecclesiastes, give me Ecclesiastes twelve and thirteen. Oh, you got it. You traveling? What have you learned about yourself? In what respect? Like you said, you learned about all these different religious books, different gods and so forth, religions or whatever, but what have you learned about who you are? As an individual, like character. As your, as your individual, your people, where you come from, why your people live the way that they do, how they got to where they got to, what have you learned from your travels about who you are? Well, from my travels, I've learned that I have been indoctrinated in the school system. A okay. lot of that is fallacy. It's not actual education. It's indoctrination. Okay. Okay. So now to that point, sis, because right, you were up here reading the Bible, right? So everything that you just said, I agree with. It's a hundred percent true. We have been indoctrinated. We're not being taught the right type of education. Not as far as math and science, but as far as history and, and social economics. We've been miseducated on those things, right? Wouldn't you agree? Now, I want to show you that the Bible covers that very same thing. Give me that in Ecclesiastes first. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, and verse 12. Uh -huh. And further by these, my son, be admonished, of making many books, there is no end. So now this is the writings of King Solomon, the, one of the wisest black kings to ever walk the earth, right? He studied all manner of wisdom, and according to the Bible, God showed him the mysteries of the beginning, middle, and end of time. That's right. So... He was exposed to many more different uh, versions of history, many more versions of what people thought. He even understood how animals think. So now, this man said, what did he say? Verse 13. No, read that part again. And further, by these, my son, uh -huh. be admonished of making many books, there is no end. So he said, he speak, he's writing a message to his offspring. He said, of making of many books, there is no end. You're always going to find books written. There's going to be books written after the Bible, and there were books written before the Bible. We all can agree on that, right? But he said, be warned of those books. Read. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. And much study of those books, if you're constantly always trying to read that information, it's going to wear you out. It's a waste of time. Why? Because everybody's going to give their own understanding and opinion of what they think history is and who God is. Right? Remember, we read earlier that God is the God of the nation of Israel. But you'll have other nations like, for example, the America, they'll say that God is the God of, uh, he's the Amer God of America. He stands with democracy. He stands with uh, 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 American liberation, right? He's with Christmas. He's with all the philosophies that are here. Same thing in, in uh, Europe. They have their own version of God, right? The Japanese, they have their own version of everybody. All nations know there is a creator. There is a uh, a divine entity and we all call them by different names and they write their thoughts but now the question is of our people who is, who is God to us that's the question because you are the because you go into Norway you're not going to learn about who your God is the God of your people how he dealt with you you go into let's say you go to you go to even if you go to different parts of Africa you're not going to learn about the God of your people you're going to learn about how God dealt with them, it's not going to benefit us. Does that make sense? So read it again. 
and further by these, my son, uh -huh. be admonished. Of making many books, there is no end. Read. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Much study of this information is going to waste your time because you're going to spend a life not learning who you really are. Your nationality, you said you were American earlier. That makes no sense. All those books that you read, they, they don't come to that conclusion. I know it doesn't. And the Bible certainly doesn't tell you you're American. Right. That word's not even written in here, right? right. Read. Verse 13. Uh -huh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So now this is what King Solomon said. He said, let's hear the conclusion of everything. Read. Fear God uh -huh. and keep his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments is the end all be all. If you, wanna, if you believe in a higher power... You're going to keep what that higher power said. Right. The gods that you looked at in when your travels, the God that maybe you may have known. And even since, the God that you, you may have grown up learning about Jesus. There's commandments that he said to do. Because if we know about him, that's fine. But right. how are you going to really be in line with him if you're not following what he said? That's right. When you die, right? right? Or even, let me ask you this. You got kids? You, got, you have children. You have, okay. When your children ask you, Mom, Dad, who is this God that we serve? How would you explain it to them? How do we serve him? What did, who is the God that we have? What you got? Oh, my God. Awesome. It's totally different. Uh-huh. But if they ask you something like that, uh -huh. definitely tell them that they're a person. Okay, you're going to start there. But, okay, who, but first, before you get there, who is the real God? That's right. Be careful. Educate me. Good, good. What you got? What you got? Same thing with you, sis. All the information that you studied, Ma, what, who am I supposed to be serving? How do I walk this earth? How do I know I'm doing right according to the God that you believe in? Where are you going to take him to? You can't take him to, oh, but this book in Norway says uh, 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 celebrate Christmas. This book over here says uh, 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 eat, eat only uh, vegetables. It doesn't make any sense. It's confusion. That's why King Solomon said that. So read that part again. Verse 13. Uh -huh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Read. Fear God and keep his commandments. Read. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the purpose of all mankind is to fear God and keep his commandments. Read. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Now, what God do you know would, be, would, would do that? Everything that you did on this earth is going to be brought to judgment based off of what he said. Read. With every secret thing, uh -huh. whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, that's how simple the God of the Bible is, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. That's how plain he makes our lives. If we're stuck around, if, like I said, if we're following different philosophies and things of that nature, you're going to be confused, and you won't know who the God is that you serve. Right? Exodus 6 and 3. Now, it's important because, like, I, like you said earlier, right, we're familiar with something like this. We know that this is a God on the earth, right? Sis, if I was to ask you who this is, who would you say? I don't know. I don't know. We know who this is. You add your hand. Who is this? Who is this? You see how easy that was to say that there's Jesus? Where, how, can, how is this proven to be Jesus? Because we got to deal with truth. Because they have told you that, right? what you think. Now, watch this. Bring it out. Who is this? Now, okay, now, we're getting somewhere, right? Read this. Hold on, sis, hold on, sis, 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 sis. sis. There's more, there's more. Read that. Now we'll come back to this chapter 6 and verse 3. And now you appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. So the God, of the, the God that created all things appeared unto our forefathers. Read. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. But he only gave them certain information. He appeared to our fathers a specific way. Now, from his appearance to Moses and to the, and to the other prophets, he gave us a specific message. Deuteronomy 28 and verse, uh, verse 1. This is the message that he gave to our ancestors. Because you're not, it's important for you to know this. And I'm going to show you why. And you too, you said you are a believer and uh, you're a poor. Now, the Bible has the history of the Moors in it. Did you know that? The Bible talks about the Moors. King James was a Moor, right? King James authorized the Bible to be translated from Greek and, 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 and Hebrew into English. That was his due because before King James, the Bible was written by, it was written in Latin where we couldn't read it. But now King James, our ancestor, had the, had the spirit of God to say, let's make it for the people to understand their history. That's real, true Moor history. Thank you.
You would believe in a higher power and you believe in God? Now, we gotta know which one is real. Cause this does this higher power judge people that you believe in? Does he bring judgment on the earth? What kind of judgment does he bring? Well, it depends on which you would I don't know how to describe it exactly, but you know, um Okay. Now, I'm going to help you out, because this guy, we're going to read about some judgments from this guy. And let's see how it matches up with reality, okay? Give me verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. Oh. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. So now, this, partic this God in the Bible said that for disobeying the commandments, he said you're going to be cursed in the cities that you live in, and cursed in the fields. Now, when you look at our people, because that's what we're talking about, he said, you're going to be cursed in the fields. Were we cursed in fields? Yeah, were we cursed in fields as a people? You don't know? When it says field, it means like the, the places where you work. Or even, take it back to the olden days, right? It's slavery, for example. For example. This is an example of fields. Th these images are all too familiar to us, correct? We've seen these in movies, drawings, museums. This is, these are fields. Now, the P our ancestors working here, is that a blessing to have to work from sun up to sun down in these no, places? It ain't, right? So what does that mean? Are we, we're cursed. Right. You see that, sis? Okay, read it again. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, uh -huh. and cursed shalt thou be in the field. And it said cursed in the city. So now, any city that you can find our people in, are we going to be dictating the, the rules? Are we going to be uh, moving around in society freely, not having to worry about any trial or tribulation? Where she traveled, where right? did she see that? Right, did you see that where you, you were in Norway? You went to you, you went to Europe. Did, you've been to Europe. Did you see black people in Europe? Because they're there. Were they at the top of society making all the rules or were they in the bottom? Both. Both. The major I'm talking about the majority. There's a difference. Well, it depends on the nation you're talking about. I'm talking about black people. Black people in Europe, black people in France, in Germany, and even in America. Are we at the top making the rules as a whole, or are we at the bottom we in places bottom. like this? We're, We're at the, the bottom. bottom. Let's keep it real. We're at the bottom. Right. Okay. We, let, think about it. Think about it. The, the money that you have on the dollar bill, our faces are not on that money. We don't make the rules as to say, okay, we can live in this neighborhood where we want, but these other people can't live with, with us. Bring it on out, out. We don't get to dictate what stores are open up in here. That. That's a curse. That's not a blessing. Does that make sense? Because as a nation of people, we would be able to do that if we were on top. Right. So read it again. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, uh -huh. and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Give me verse 30, uh, 31 about thy sons and thy daughters. Verse 32. Read. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Now, the next curse from this God of the Bible says that your sons and daughters will be given to another people. Who did that happen to on earth today? That's We're talking about us, right? In slavery, our sons and daughters were separated from us. They were given away on auction blocks. Again, back to the image. This is an example of it. In Africa, you've been to Africa before? In Africa, do you still see uh, buildings of the slave auctions? They have, they have a big one in, in Ghana, on the Gold Coast. They still have those, those relics left today. They sold children to this side of the world, to further into East Africa, to Asia, to Europe, right. right? They were scattered. They even have some in Germany and Switzerland. They have slave auction blocks still there. Right. They don't They don't get rid of that stuff. They leave that information there because right. when you look at it, you're supposed to remember who you are. Yep. Right. But the point is, is that God said, read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Read. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. When, when our sons and daughters were taken from us, we could not get them back. Right. Our eyes failed with, for, for longing because it was painful. For you to have your children taken away from you, that's a pain you probably can never get over. That's, right. that's, that's black history. Right. Am I right? Even in, in, in places like Oakland, 
you have all these, you have a lot of museums and relics that are being covered up to hide that type of information. Oakland is a proud black environment, but the Bible is the only book that's going to give you the, the clarity of who we are. That's what we're trying to show you.